Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyunggi Province this week. Kyunggi Province recently established the Contents Fair Trade Counseling Center so as to protect the interests of contents industry professionals and strengthen the province's capabilities in responding to unfair trade practices in the industry. Services cover a range of issues including contracts, disputes and lawsuits, as well as the provision of damage counseling and legal opinions. Cases are handled by specialists from related fields including lawyers, tax accountants, labor attorneys and patent agents. In addition, legal consultation services are also provided when necessary. Kyunggi Province is receiving applications for its Youth Job Interview Cost Support, an initiative undertaken by Kyunggi Province Governor Lee Jae Myung during the fourth application period that ends on December 31st. Any youth aged 18 to 39 who resides in the province as of the date of application is entitled to support of up to 210,000 Korean won, paid in local currency, for job interviews attended this year. Applications are being received online via the Kyunggi Province Employment Foundation website. Detailed application information can be obtained by calling the related call center at 1877-2046. On December 15th, the Kyunggi Provincial Assembly passed next year's provincial budget in its original draft that totals 28.87 trillion Korean won. This budget includes funding for key pledges made by Governor Lee Jae Myung, including 10.7 billion Korean won for public delivery app operation and 17.6 billion Korean won for farmer basic income payments. With the passage of the budget for key projects, the provincial administration will have impetus in its administrative pursuits in 2021. Kyunggi Province has been operating a desk to receive reports from victims of human rights violations that occurred at Sangam Hagwon. Recently, Kyunggi Province Vice Governor for Peace Lee Jae-gang, together with victim representative Kim Young-bae, visited the unresolved past remedial committee and delivered a list of alleged victims together with the institute's enrollment register. During his visit, Vice Governor Lee urged the committee chairperson to uncover the full truth about the related incidents. He also stated that the province will cooperate with the investigation through the provision of collected records as well as survey and analysis results. Kyunggi Province recently announced plans to develop a paper company identification system for full implementation from next year. This system will use the Construction Industry Intelligence System operated by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport to identify suspected paper companies through analyses of standards violations by individual companies. With this system, the province will be able to screen suspected enterprises preemptively instead of cracking down on them based solely on external information. Kyunggi Province plans to operate a total of 72 temporary COVID-19 screening centers so as to proactively identify symptomless carriers. During a regular press briefing on December 15th, Kyunggi Province COVID-19 Emergency Headquarters Chief Lee Hee Young asked even those residents without symptoms to voluntarily undergo testing so as to help control the current third wave of infections. There are currently 52 COVID-19 screening centers operating in the province. The province began the establishment of 20 more centers at strategic locations in phases from December 16th. On December 15th, Kyunggi Province Vice Governor for Peace Lee Jae-gang walked across the Unification Bridge in Imjingak in minus 10 degrees Celsius weather while bowing every three steps as a ceremonial gesture to convey wishes for the reopening of the Gaesung Industrial Complex in North Korea. In addition, he proposed the establishment of a joint public and private cooperative body for the pursuit of a continuous and wider range of efforts for the same purpose. Vice Governor Lee also stated that, in this regard, he anticipates active support from diverse sectors 
including political circles, social groups, religious societies, and academia, as well as members of the public. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.